Welcome to Module 4 of this year's Catechism class. This month, the spiritual discipline that we'll be looking at in conjunction with Jesus' life and the life of the Church is the discipline of prayer. Over the years, when it comes to prayer as a pastor, the two comments that I have heard the most are, why do Lutherans have their prayers written out in worship? I don't like that. If I want to talk to God, I'll just talk to Him. And then the second comment I hear is, I don't pray a lot because I really don't know how to. And so my comment to the first group of folks who say they don't like that Lutherans have their prayer written out is to share the comment from the second group of folk about not knowing how to pray. And then I explain that the reason we have our prayers written out is because that's how the church teaches us how to pray. And we as Lutherans aren't the first ones to come up with this. In fact, as far back as Jesus' own day, when his disciples saw him praying, one of them said to him, Lord, teach us to pray the way John the Baptist taught his disciples. And so that's when Jesus taught them the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that begins with, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's a prayer that you and I still pray to this day. And the way we learned it was that the disciples whom Jesus taught it to wrote it down and passed it on and on and on, down through the ages until it's printed on our bulletin and in our worship books. The point is that as followers of Jesus, we need to be taught how to pray. We're not born knowing how to pray to God and talk to God any more than we're born knowing how to talk, period. And so just like John the Baptist and Jesus taught their disciples, the church, which is the body of Christ in the world, teaches you and I how to pray through the prayers that we have written down in our worship service, in our hymn books, and in the Bible. They help us to learn the language of prayer and learn how to pray that way. Just the way that if you're studying English or math or sport, you have to learn the terminology. You have to learn the language of that particular discipline. You have to learn about verbs and nouns and participles, or about addition and subtraction and fractions, or the difference between the offense and the defense and what they do. And that's one of the reasons you're studying the small catechism, to learn how to pray. Because in the catechism, Martin Luther teaches us a lot about prayer. How to pray at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day. How to pray before meals and after meals. And in particular, the, the, the prayer that Martin Luther spends the most time on is the Lord's Prayer. The, G, the prayer Jesus teaches to us. The prayer he taught to his disciples. On pages 32 to 34 of your small catechism, Luther goes through the Lord's Prayer line by line and explains to us what each petition or what each request means. So, for instance, when Jesus teaches us to start the prayer with our Father who art in heaven, Luther explains that the reason Jesus did this was because Jesus wants us to know that God is truly our Father and we are truly his children. He wants us to have the confidence to approach God in prayer and to ask for whatever we need the way we would approach and ask our loving earthly Father. Or when Jesus teaches us to pray, Thy kingdom come and thy will be done, Luther reminds us that God's kingdom comes and his will is done whether we ask for it or not. So in this prayer, what we're praying for, what we're asking for, is that God would make them come about in us and be done through us. And Luther explains that to have God's kingdom come and his will be done in us and through us is to ask God through prayer and pray that his Holy Spirit would come to us and help us to believe God's word and live our lives according to it. In other words, what Jesus is teaching us is that we should pray that we would be able to live by the power of his Holy Spirit holy and godly lives. Or when Jesus teaches us to pray, give us this day our daily bread, Luther reminds us of what Jesus teaches us in the Bible, that God provides for the needs of all people, even evil people, whether they ask for it or not. As Jesus says, God causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on both the righteous and the unrighteous. And so when we pray this prayer, what we're asking for is for God to help us recognize all the things that he gives to us and to receive them all with thanksgiving. And that includes all the necessities of life, our food, our drink, our clothing, our homes, our money, our property, family and friends, public servants, health, and so on and so forth. And, and when Jesus teaches us to ask, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, Luther reminds us that God tempts no one, and so when we pray here, the, the, th the thing we're praying for is that God would protect us and keep us from being tempted by the devil and the world in our own sinful flesh. Jesus is teaching us to ask God to keep us from falling into sin and despair and disbelief, as well as all the other kinds of evil that might assail us, our bodies, our souls, 
our property or our reputation. And one of my favorite quotes from Martin Luther in, in all of the writings that he did comes from this explanation to this very last petition about deliver us from evil. In that Martin Luther says that in addition to praying God to protect us from all the evils of this lifetime, Jesus is also teaching us to pray to God and to ask that at the very last hour, Luther says, when our final hour comes, we should pray that God would grant us a blessed end and take us by his grace from this valley of tears to be with himself in heaven. I don't know about you, but I think that is just a beautiful sentiment, that God would deliver us from a valley of tears to the joys of his heaven. And I could never come up with such a prayer, such a beautiful prayer on my own. But I'm thankful for Jesus, for Luther, and for the whole church that have taught me how to pray this kind of prayer. And as I say, Luther's small catechism has many more prayers to teach us. Every class session, you and I pray Luther's morning and evening prayers to begin and end the class. And he also teaches us how to pray before and after meals. And the Bible is filled with examples of prayers. The book of Psalms alone is an example of 150 different prayers. And one of the handouts that you'll be using this month is a, a, an example of all the many different ways and times Jesus prayed. And so we can use his prayers as models for our own. And then there are prayers from St. Paul and others in scriptures that teach us and give us models for how we can shape and pray our own prayers. And in fact, I'm going to end the video now by praying for you one of the prayers that St. Paul teaches us how to pray, one of the prayers he prayed for the church in Rome. So bow your heads with me and let us pray. God of hope, please fill our catechism students and their parents with joy and peace as they trust in you. And I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would make their lives overflow with hope. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, I look forward to meeting with you at the end of this month. And as you pray together this month and learn about prayer, I hope that your lives and your faith would be strengthened and deepened in Christ Jesus our Lord.